Thermal paste. It's pretty much a must when you're building your PC. You put it in between your CPU and your heatsink and it allows the heat to conduct from the CPU to the outside world. There are a lot of different kinds of pastes out there from TG7 by Thermaltake to all the way up to Arctic Silver 5. But is there really a difference between the brands out there? Let's find out. What is up guys, Matt here for the Toasty Bros and I'm here to bring you a little bit of a test. We're going to be testing TG7 Thermal Grease from Thermaltake compared to the Arctic Silver 5 and to see if there is a noticeable increase in temperature or decrease in temperature based on which one you choose. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. So I posted a poll on Twitter a few days ago where I asked you all, do you think the brand name of Thermal Paste matters? And it seemed to be somewhat split. Some of you think yes it does and some of you think no with a little bit of you favoring no so I thought this would make a great video idea so this is what I went about doing for a while I've had this TG7 thermal grease from thermal take on my CPU and I've been getting relatively high temps with my new 5820k I've kind of narrowed it down to two possible causes one thermal paste or two the ambient temperature in my room so I wanted to go ahead and eliminate one of those options so I went ahead and picked up this this is Arctic Silver 5. This is a very well-known brand thermal paste, and as you can tell, the density here is quite obvious. These were the exact same price. This was $7.95 at Best Buy, $7.95 on Amazon. As you can tell, this comes in a lot smaller package and is known to be more high quality compared to most thermal paste out there. But does that really make a difference? All of these just say they're high density thermal paste and they dissipate heat the best. Is it just a marketing ploy or does it really matter? And is there really that substantial of a difference between thermal paste brands? What we're gonna be doing is hitting the test bench, basically my personal rig. So what I did, I reapplied some Thermal Take TG7 Thermal Grease into my system with an i7-5820K and a Corsair H100i GTX liquid cooler. I reapplied it and ran a couple tests. What we did was idle temperatures just on the desktop idling, and then we did an IDA64 stress test temperature, and we did a gaming temperature, which we use CSGO as example because it's something that I play regularly, and it's just somewhat of a medium to low end demanding title, and it really brings a good use case for most of you out there who just doing basic gaming. So the temperatures are averaged throughout all the cores. I basically added up the temperatures from all the cores based on hardware monitor and put out an average temperature, which I'll show you right here. As for clock speed, I am running the 5820K at four gigahertz, just so you know. I wanna test this with a decent overclock, not a crazy overclock, and just see what temperatures we are getting from the CPU based on the difference between Arctic Silver 5 and TG7 from Thermaltake. So let's get right into the benchmarks. As you can tell, the Thermaltake grease at idle averaged a temperature around 34 degrees Celsius at four gigahertz, which is actually pretty solid. At idle with about 5% CPU usage on my desktop, there was really nothing going on, and it was about 34 degrees Celsius. There were some peaks where it hit about 39 and 40 randomly. It would go up and down between 34 and 39, but most of the time, based on the averages, it's about 34 degrees Celsius, so that's pretty solid. When we jump into IDA64, there is a big jump. The average is about 65 degrees Celsius on full 100% load at 4 gigahertz, which isn't that bad, but it is on the higher end of the temperature echelon. I really do not like getting my CPUs above 60 degrees Celsius, but in this case, with an i7-5820K, these things produce a ton of heat, and as long as it's below the 75 degree threshold, it really is stable and safe. Now as for gaming in CSGO, which is a more usable workload because IDA64 is a ultimate worst case scenario, 100% usage on your CPU and all over your system, it's more of a reasonable use case scenario. And during the gaming session, we reached about an average temperature of 54 degrees Celsius, which is more than stable, it's more than solid, it's a little bit hot, a little bit toasty, but it's a very solid temperature and I mean, I can't complain too much about it, but I would love to see. Is there a difference between this and the Arctic Silver 5? So what I did was basically swap out the thermal paste. I took it out, clean off my cooler with some isopropic alcohol, rubbed everything down and put in a dot of the Arctic Silver 5, which you can see right here. And I basically put my heat sit back on, tied everything down, and we ran the same suite of benchmarks once again. And in these benchmarks, this is what shows. Idle temperatures, 
not that big of a difference. We were about 33 degrees Celsius average based on all the cores on this CPU. There were some peaks just like the other one. And on first boot, it was running pretty toasty. It was running about 40 degrees, 45 degrees Celsius load. But eventually after it started settling down, I let my CPU run for a little while and let my computer just sit on the desktop for a while. But on first install, it was running a little bit toasty, but after a while it started going down and down and down. So at 33 degrees Celsius on average, it's a degree lower than the thermal tank pace which really isn't that substantial of a difference and I would probably bet that's within margin of error and if I left my computer running for a little while longer and ran the test again it would probably get about the same average. ID64 was the most interesting of them all because when I ran the test I found out that I was getting an average across all the cores of 59 degrees Celsius, a good 6 degrees Celsius cooler than with my thermal paste grease. Now, the, my testing methodology does have some flaws because there could be some margin of error based on the application of each of these, but I did use the same application method, which is just a normal dot method down the middle. So with my idea here being that this paste might be slightly better, a good 5 to 6 degrees Celsius is somewhat significant for a thermal paste application in my personal opinion. But then things got a little bit weird. Under gaming, I basically averaged about the same when it came to degrees Celsius, about 53, 54 degrees Celsius. The overall average came out to be like 53.8. So if I rounded it up, it was about 54. And that kind of tells the story here. Does thermal paste actually make a difference? I would almost lean towards no, but in that load setting, it does bring up an interesting point. Is there a way that thermal paste does work a little bit better when the CPU is at its utmost highest temperature, or is it just a anomaly? I would lean towards it being an anomaly and not anything to really look into, but really, I think this is a very interesting test, and I'm very interested with the results that basically whatever brand you go with, it's going to be a hit or miss few degree difference. I know Thermaltake isn't the cheapest brand out there, and I know there's a lot cheaper brands out there, which I might get my hands on and do this test all over again, but there really is no difference between the higher end stuff like Arctic Silver 5 and this Thermal Paste Grease that I just picked up at Best Buy for about the same price, but you get a hell of a lot more, and it came in a two-pack. There's two of these for $7.95, and there's just one of these for $7.95. So, my conclusion, does Thermal Paste Grease really matter what brand it is? I would say no. I would pick up whatever you can get your hands on. And if you do have a lot of thermal issues, I would definitely just look into some reviews about it before you actually pick it up. So I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, leave a like down below and comment what you think and what thermal paste brand you use. If you want me to do some more testing methodology with this, like a different thermal paste brand, I will definitely consider picking it up and doing the testing again. And if you have any concerns with my testing methodology, please comment down below. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Check out all our social media links and shop on Amazon using our affiliate code. And I really appreciate all the support we've been having on this channel. We've been growing a lot recently and I agree greatly appreciated a ton. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Peace out.